so Mia, I think we're all set. Okay, I'm gonna make you the host and then you can take it away. Yeah, thank you so much, Mia. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. Thank you for your patience. And yeah, you can always have... call me if you have a problem. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. You too, thank you. Okay, good evening. This is a meeting of the Marina Advisory Committee, Wednesday, January 27th. We're gonna start the meeting at 7.15. I think everybody got um, the materials that were sent out. So, um, announcements, open session, any comments? Anybody have anything? Uh, look, it looks like three people are still muted. Or, or maybe they're not here, Flip and Martha and William. Uh, yeah. Flip, are you on? Flip? Flip has to unmute. No, oh, just unmute, yeah. Martha, you got to unmute. Yes, does that work? You got it. Yeah, yeah. Flip, you're on. Flip? Yeah, like I said. Uh, Martha, yeah, you're I'm on. Here. She, she's Martha still on mute. Still, uh, mute. And so is, so is Will. Can you do that as the host, Joe? Can you change? Um, I just sent her a message right now. Yeah, you might be able to as the host, Joe. Unmute. Martha, are you on? Everybody. Sorry, but she's muted. Yeah, Martha, Martha shows as unmuted now. She does. But uh, Will still shows as being muted. Okay. Yeah, Will, you're not on yet. I'm here. Oh, there, there you we go. go. There yeah, he's go. on. Okay. Martha, are you uh, on? No. Uh, Kevin should be trying to get in right now. I'll give her a quick ring. Yeah. You press a little button, you don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah, I'm not picking up. I'm not on my computer, so I'm like, what am I? I'm not touching anything. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Ke totally still waiting to be let in. Okay, I'm going to try. Um... I'm looking for Kevin and I'm calling Martha. Multitasking. Martha's yeah. talking, but can't hear nothing. Hi, Martha, can you unmute? We can see you, we can't hear you. Why don't you um, close it out and, and launch it again, huh? Did you get the did you get the latest email I sent the Zoom link? Okay. Nice flip. You like that? <laughs> okay. I like your little back. You even that know where it is, Walter? Yeah, I learned that from Will. He, he's taught me how to do this. Right, but what do you know? About? You know what that is? Hey, the A Tropical beach you got today. Tropical beach, not one here. <laughs> Tropical beach, that's it. Period. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, not here. Kevin, I just clicked Kevin on. I see his name. I don't, I don't see him. Sure. I see oh, him. There he is. Uh, Kevin, are you on? I'm all. You're on, Kevin. Yep. Okay. I got one in this afternoon. Oh, and, there's Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, and, see him. Is everybody good? Uh, yeah. Kevin, Kev, how are you, buddy? Good waiting for you. Martha. Wait for me. Yeah. 
There's a Garen Peterson on, uh, but he's muted. There's another one, Jane. There's a Jane on too. Yeah, I just entered Martha as the host, but it shows. Okay, now, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, there you are. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> I think the whole gang is here. Yeah, we have some visitors that are, their video and audio isn't on, but. That, yeah, yeah. Well, one video is on the other, um, the audios. And Martha, I, Martha's back off. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah there's I'm there. on. So Martha's on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, announcements, open session. Anybody have anything? All right. Why don't we go right to the minutes? of January 13th. If you could take a minute or two to review those, then we'll entertain a motion unless there are changes. Does anybody want to offer uh, an amendment of any kind or a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Of... I'll second. Is that John second? Yep. Okay, Martha, bear with me. I'm taking the minutes. And John, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it's a unanimous vote. All right, uh, why don't we move on to the Harbor Master Report? Will? Yeah, uh, just working on the fuel tanks, working on uh, if you can square it away here and just um that's pretty much it pretty quiet so far this winter um getting ready for a freeze up check off today we should have a little bit of cold weather coming in this weekend so we're making sure that uh doesn't affect anything some fights and things like that um that's pretty much it for this past couple of weeks can you um, give us an update on the fuel tank, please? Uh, we don't have one. Okay. Those are due in Friday. Uh -huh. what's, what's due, quotes? Uh, some engineering diagrams, the majority of the project, yeah. yeah kind of like a draft packet um, of what's gonna be happening. Um, after speaking with him today, that should be in on Friday, so we can have that on the evening. So it hasn't got out to bid yet? No, no, we have to finalize the evening. So where are they located? Uh, right now, the, the time is really focused on between, um, obviously it's an above ground tank, so it could be moved, but the main focus of the design has been between nuts and the shellfish building with a, um, a gas uh, a gas filling station to turn on vehicles, uh, piped underground to the, to the fuel dock, but the pipes will not be resting on the fuel dock, hopefully. They will be uh, retractable wheels. <laughs> Of the bulkhead that way we don't we have less exposure on the water with uh fuels in mind so well when you said we, uh, the um, shellfish office do you mean between that office and and the harbor freeze 
Uh, yes, yeah, between the Shellfish Office and Max. Uh huh. What size tank? They're going to go with the long one, Will? That's what we're trying to. We have to narrow down the dimensions between the 10,000 and the 18 and see what we can maximize for the fit in there. Hopefully, it'll be the 18. It just, the only thing is if the state requires a bigger setback on it, we'd have to shrink the tank a little bit. So we're going trying to go with the 18, but never any less than that 10,000. Thank you. What's the split between the gas and the diesel? Um, typically right now it's, uh, what, 60, 40. Um, so it'll at least be that. Probably a little more on the gas side since we'll be having the town use it. But again, that would be with the specific tank that we, have, we buy in the company that's narrowed down. Um, I think we have one company narrowed down, but again, we have to send that to the state to get approval by the state um, fire, fire marshal. So it would be 60 gas and 40, 6,000 gallons of gas, 4,000 gallons of diesel, theoretically. On a 10,000, which would be the minimum. So hopefully if we can get a bigger tank in there towards that 18,000, it would still be that same split. Geez, Walter, you did that math all in your head? I went to college one time. <laughs> that was a party. 100 years ago. Yeah, 100 years ago. Better for it. <laughs> well, do you, okay. do you any see other? any setback issues with um, putting the tanks there? As far as um, having a, uh, the tanks right next to a, a structure, a building? No, um, no, they will be um, a few feet off of the building. We should be within the minimal setbacks. Um, these tanks can actually sometimes be right up against buildings the way they're designed. But I think in this situation, um, having a few feet off of the building, I think that five is the key. Um, for that, and then and then 15 off the property line, I think was a kind of a standard, which they're trying to again, maximize that whole area that we have. But uh, they can generally go pretty close because they are, you know, double walled, insulated, air suppression system, um, pump on top type of tank. You know, with the yeah. Will there be any uh, fencing of any kind put around it, like decorative, and also what will it be the access to fueling the tanks? So the access, I believe, is on, on top of the tank, um, how they fuel it. Um, what the tank will have is a concrete, um, I don't want to say cylinder because it's not round, but a concrete uh, encasement around it with any kind of like, um, we could use a pebble or a sand facade on it. Um, and then there will be probably most likely have to be some concrete uh, barriers, you know, for vehicles. And then a flat concrete fueling pad in front of it mm -hmm. uh, and that would require like you know a little access on the top of the tank for the mechanic yeah yeah but what i'm also getting at uh, you know from a parking standpoint because that's a really congested area will there be a dedicated uh, area for a truck to pull in yes yeah because it will be a fueling pad so we will mark it block it off as such um, so that way, you know, there'll be a concrete pad. Like at the gas station, if you look down when you're pumping, you have the concrete pad with the lines around it. Um, so we will have to designate that and paint it as such and not allow parking in front of it. Um, yeah, and then it would have a, like a suppression type system on top of it to go with that. Any other questions or comments? And there is, there is also a, a possibility, what I, what I may like to see on top of it is, I don't know if we can, we have to check with the fire marshal, but it could be like a, uh, an overhang, you know, kind of like a, what may look more like a traditional roof of those buildings. So we'll kind of mesh in with the architecture of the surrounding building instead of just having that. But it may have to be elevated up above the tank a little bit in order for air ventilation, but we'll be checking on that. Just to kind of make it fit in a little better over there. And of course, lighting. We want, we want lighting because uh, police and fire, ourselves in an emergency, we need to use it 24 seven. Okay, anything else? All right, we'll move on to the dredging update. Um, 
the two requests for proposals are going to be going out um, next week, um, <clears throat> requesting the proposals from the engineers um, to do areas one and two of dredging. Uh, last night, I did a presentation to the select board on the um, proposals submitted by our lobbyist in Washington, D.C., and they approved of the proposal and approved the funding of the contract. So uh, that's in place. Other than that, I don't have um, any other new information to report. Obviously, there's no dredging going on now uh, with the uh, restriction. Okay, um, Marina concerns and suggestions. I do have one dredging question. Yeah. Uh, now, is has uh, has any kind of uh, request for a proposal been uh, let out for the next fall's uh, dredging? I mean, does Cashman is it automatically going to Cashman, or or is there a new, oh, no, new bidding? No. It, it'll have to go out to bid. Oh, so there will be new bidding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully Cashman will come in with the right bid and get it again because they've, you know, they, they know what's up out there. Yeah. Well, they're, they've been pretty hungry for the work. Okay, um, Marina concerns and suggestions. Anybody have anything? Are the concrete docks going to be worked on this winter, Will? Yes. Now, did you get any money to hire anybody yet? We do have some money in the budget. Um, it's very thin for the personnel. We do have more money for the supplies and materials. Um, the personnel will most likely, uh, hopefully, coincide. We'll probably try to push that back a little bit more towards the spring so that we can be doing a little more all all in one in order to work, but the personnel budget is a little for um, specific work on it. Um, but coming up with any kind of time, we will be using them. And of course, I've already started ordering materials for them, and some materials have arrived already. With the amount of, uh, you know, budget, the amount that you have in the budget right now, and uh, the proposed personnel that you have to work on that, uh, approximately how many of them do you think you can get done in the next couple months? Probably half a dozen. Okay. So that'll probably be the majority of the section is what we're going for. Which section? I couldn't hear you well. D. D. Yeah, just keep on going with them and try to get the majority of that done and, and get with a half dozen in there. Will, just a quick question. And again, total to this. Uh, as uh, everybody knows, it's going to get congested around the gas dock and come in. Has there been any plan about a, 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 like a extra dock or a couple extra docks to alleviate that? Overflow. Yeah, one thing, one thing we're working on right now is to see if we can put maybe an extra dock on our public dock and our transient dock, kind of a temporary dock without any pilings. Um, when we get into the pilings, is where we get into a little more trouble with, um, you know, like uh, the permitting aspect. But if there's a floating dock attached to it, which we could call temporary, um, we'd be a lot, it'd be a lot easier to. Do. So that would add a 16 footer on connection, um, which would probably put, you know, a boat on each leaf to try to leave. you looked on the other side of the aisle where they dredged out, that's enough now. What's that? Didn't they use that at one time when they were doing bulkhead, they used that uh, area uh, as a temporary rock area. On the other side of the elp here where they dredged it out. Oh, on the, um, the railway? In front of Max there. Yeah, um, that is a possibility to put the other docks in there. It depends on if we um, put the pilings in that situation because of the, the rise on and with the chain gear. But it is a possibility too. We can put the larger boats in there too, like the commercial fishing boats and stuff. If they can't get around back, they can dock on that side. Thanks, Will. 
Anything else? Okay, the next item is a discussion of the arena fees. Um, well, we got the uh, fees you sent from the other arenas. Um, when we left off last time, we said um, one of the things that we wanted to look at where you were going to provide us with the, the um, different fees for different sections in the slip area, but I didn't get anything on that. Uh, I sent it out directly after the meeting, but it is on our website as well. Um, the fee schedule that we've had. Yeah. Did others get it? Yeah. I, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm yeah, okay. too. Uh, I'll go back. Yeah, he sent it out the next, either that night or the next morning. Uh, it was, it's a Word document, Joe. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty quick. I, yeah. Um, yeah, some of the documents are coming in funny. I don't like a lot of different types of documents, and I just train. I had to just do a computer upgrade, and oh my god! Yeah, so, like, uh, everything. The, the fee schedule that we have, uh, the one on our website, in a Word doc that I sent out immediately after the meeting. Yeah, and, I got it in your email. Yep, got it here. From the other Marina's flip, we're all scanned. Yeah, they have come in different formats too. So. We got a new scanner here. It um, says uh, oh, 2019, great. but then it gives you 2017. Yeah. yeah, I got it here. Okay, who would like to start the discussion? I assume everybody had a chance to look at that in the other marinas. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I'll, I'll start the discussion by saying that, I mean, I've, I've I still hold true to what I initially talked about the last meeting is just a, for us as a, a simple percentage increase. I know um, Will showed a little bit of concern about, um, you know, certain areas that might need to be tweaked a little bit, which I totally get and that's totally fine. But in, on an overall, this is pretty simple. Maybe we do need to address some of the other things that don't quite work, but we've, you know, we've slowly done that over time anyway, and kind of tweaking things that are like, okay, well, you know, we, we did the, the whole commercial uh, uh, off season rate, and we really boosted that up to keep people off the dock, off the uh, upper pier during the winter because it was getting to be a hassle. Um, so, um, you know, I, I still think the five percent over a course of a period of time, it makes sense. I mean, in looking at the other places, I mean, every, you know, everybody does it different. I mean, and, and all the other, I mean, obviously Pam, it's cheap. P-Town's a little weird to me, the way they have it set up, but it, but it works. Yeah, but it works for them. And, and, and ours works for us at, right now. And, 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 you know, I mean, I don't think we need to restructure it. I think we need to focus on trying to get a little more income out of all the slip holders and the mooring holders and, and, and you know, go with it because we need it. You know, it's the, it's the only I, way we can I, really I, get I, money. Left. I agree with you, Flip, that we need it. I don't know if we should be doing it right now, though. And I'll tell you why I feel that way. Um, at least some of this. It's October. Um, we don't have a finished product with our marina. We still have mud that we sit on. You're asking us to raise prices for all our slip owners and our mooring owners, which is fine, but what are you getting for it? It's the same as last year and the year before. You're sitting in the mud and it's not a, a quality product. I think that you're more justified, plus COVID. And I look at COVID as an issue where there's a lot of people not working. There's a lot of issues with financial restraints on certain people, I'm sure. Um, so my concern is that we wait until we're fully dredged to institute a, a fee increase incrementally. Um, some things I think can be tweaked now. I think maybe we could increase some of the, uh, the user fees that are daily, like, um, you know, launching, you know, what is yeah. it? And what can't increase the launch fee. That's for the state. Dave, Dave, just think That's about the state right. requirement. On, on an average, on an average slip, 
it's 1600 bucks. We're talking about $80 increase next year. Yeah. Okay. 80 bucks on a $1,600 split. That's, I that's understand that. Compared to what they're going to get the following year. You got to, you got to think about the big picture that 80 bucks times however many slips we have is huge. And it's going to help us make it look better the following year when we have the dredge, it's going to be killer. I mean, 80 bucks is minor. And I'm talking in an you average. I agree. It's break the bank. I, well, I, I, I'm not arguing that point. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I, I think that, that a fee increase right now without any real changes in what we've done, um, people are going to kick back on that. I think you're going to get some kickback. I mean, look at all the kickback we got when we, when we uh, went through the town meetings and tried to restructure the marina fee schedule. It, it was like pulling teeth with some of the changes, if you recall. Yeah, I just think that there's, you know, 300 people waiting in line that wouldn't mind paying. Not that, you know, I'm not trying to boost people out or trying to change the town. I'm just, I'm trying to be, I want to make sure that we have enough for when all, all of a sudden, all right, next year we need to do all these repairs and all this up stuff, but we don't have any money. because We got to wait for the following year to get it. You know, people are going to come back down the next year when you got every, they're going to go, what the hell is this, you know? I don't know. I'm just trying to be ahead of the game. Unless we borrow money and then we do the fee increases on a four or five rate over the next five years or something, you know, put it out for next year because granted we're going to lose a month next year or you know half a month for people losing their slips because we got to get out in August, October first for the dredging. So yeah, that looks a little shady. Yeah, it pays more, but you get less time. I get that. That was my only real concern, but I still think that you know if we if you pay up front for what you're going to get the following year, it's a better look, but that's my own opinion. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I see your, I see your side of it. I kind of agree with flip the fact that you could, and I don't, I don't like the idea of increases at all, but we need the money. and uh, <laughs> we need the money and have the money in hand to be able to work on things. I mean, it, when we send out, when, when Will sends out the bills, and there's an increase, explain the increase. Say, hey, this is so that we can improve the, the situation here. I like that, Pa. Yeah, I, I like that justification. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Do, Dredging well, is happening. We got to have some money to get this place rolling, you know? Yeah. No, I know. I, just... I, I, I tend to lean, you know, I, Dave, I see your point, certainly. And uh, okay. um, I just, I, I kind of leaning toward what Flip had to say in the sense that we already have some notable changes as it is but uh, up by the uh, fuel dock and the launch ramp and going forward we're not only looking at uh, the future dredging but we're also looking at the improvements we've talked about with the facilities mm -hmm. which you know if, if we're going to charge more for our slips uh, hang on let me see silence that <laughs> uh, if we're going to charge more for uh, slips and moorings um, ultimately we're going to want to have more to show for it in terms of our facilities and that's going to cost money going forward and I, I, I don't think a modest increase would be out of line and you know as, as somebody who's paying a, a basically a transient rate for my charter my sailing charter god damn it Somebody wants them. <laughs> oh, I, you know, um, you know, that was a friend of mine. That uh, there was no short conversations with him. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, well, I lost my train of thought there. But yeah, going forward, I think we're going to need to uh, pay attention to, to our facilities when we are charging more for our slips. I think people are going to have, have good reason to expect more, you know, than, than our shoddy looking restrooms and barely functional showers and so forth. And that's going to cost money. So I don't think a modest increase is, is, is asking that much. Um, well, have you done any kind of projection as to, let's say it was like a 5% increase, you know, um, what that would re be realized to the enterprise fund? Uh, an approximate uh, estimate of that would be uh, 10 percent would be about sixty thousand dollars. 
5% would be about $30,000. So if we started with the 5%, um, we'd, we'd come in with about $30,000, which would have been more than enough to build and finish all those docks for the and &E section and the personnel to do it. Um, so that was, that's what about a 5% would do um, with our basic rates. We know what the, the basic flow. Yeah, I really understand what Dave's saying, but at the same time, I, I think that uh, we do need to do some type of a modest increase because if we wait and then try to jump it up, it's 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 going to be a little bit too much for people to stand. But if they have a little bit of an increase each year, it's a little bit more palatable. But I also think that you know we maybe should sit down and you know especially with Will and and come up with some um, you know concrete things that we know that these increases are going to be going for like, you know, X number of docks would get done if we had like a 5% or a 10% increase or, you know, some other minor improvement would get done that, and perhaps maybe even a very simple one that, you know, people that utilize the docks every year would see. Exactly. I, 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 a few more trash cans or, you know, <laughs> Right, I, 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 can, I can live with that a little bit better as long as we have some sort of information flow to the people who are going to be paying these bills, why the rate's going up. Yeah, even new docs. Um, if I well, could uh, sure. offer two thoughts. Um, one, um, I think it's somewhat difficult to, to look at this issue without looking at a spreadsheet of all of the finances, uh, the debt, the projections, the upcoming bills, to give us an idea of, of what we're looking at in the near future. It doesn't have to be 10 years down the road, but in the near future, to project income, look at our present debt, and look at um, the projects, the bills that are beginning to come home. My second thought is I've, I've looked at all the documents and um, thought a lot about it. Um, I'm opposed to any increase this year. I'll tell you why. We're in a national crisis. Unemployment is super high. Some people are going hungry. People are hurting. There's no dredge improvement for this summer. We know that Wellfleet boaters are not wealthy, okay? I understand and appreciate the need for a modest increase. And I've always supported that in the past, but I don't see any harm in waiting one year because this summer, even though we have the channel dredge, this summer, as Dave said, everything is the same. We're basically offering the same product. It's hard to justify that. And overall, it's, it's the, the symbol of the town, you know, asking for more money at the worst possible time. So my thought is to, to look at all, all the budget items, to wait a year, then all the slips will be done, new piles in and so forth. And people will really have something to um, bite into. And, and at that point, maybe look at at least a minimum of a five-year plan that could conceivably next year be more than 5% based on what we see in the budget. Those are my thoughts. Um, Joe, when's, the, when's or Will, when's the last time we, we had an increase that um, in, in the mooring and dockage fees? I think the last one that I could find was approximately 10 years ago. Right, right. And I think that I, I'm kind of siding with Flip, John, and Martha on this, that we have to really look long-term, and I totally appreciate the short-term economic situation is, is not great, but it because we're a self-sustaining enterprise fund, we, we have to plan ahead. We're forced to because we have to justify every expenditure with, with our own revenue. So while I agree that short-term it, it hurts, if we can put together a communication, a rationale for the increase, both the length of time since it's been an increase, because we're, I, I think, well, I didn't study every marina, but it looks like we're pretty below, pretty far below what I would call market. In other words, um, you know, we're not pricing ourselves out of the market by doing anything. And then secondly, we had talked about a capital plan last meeting anyway, that would be a good 
support for, you know, talking, like Martha said, kind of talking about what we plan for future improvements that this increase would help support. So there's a kind of a, you know, a, a give and take. We're going to take more money, but we're going to provide uh, upgrades, you know, docks and restrooms and so on. So I, I look at it as like a down payment for what we're going to achieve over the course of the time. That's why, I mean, I know, I understand what you guys are saying that you can't charge more for what you don't see, but if I'm going to start a job, I'm going to need a down payment because they're going to get the ball rolling. You can't just all of a sudden have the product and then say, oh, well, we're going to give charge another 25% on your fees. If you start little, it doesn't hurt as much. I just, that's my, that's just the way I feel about it. I mean, I, I get everybody's point of view, but that's just my take on it. Well, what, about the possibility that, what about the possibility that after we look at the spreadsheet of all the figures and determine how much money is needed, that our thoughts are at that point that it should be six, seven percent over how many years? Right. I, I looked at all of the other arbors. Um, and we are competitive with some and a little below and others, um, not that far off. Um, but I don't like getting locked into 5% now without looking at those figures where we keep, have to keep going back to the select board for approval. We'd be going to the well too often. Given the mm -hmm. fact that we don't have dredging for this summer, if we did that work next year at this time, we may be looking at six or seven percent and can and can state to people where the money is going to go. It's not going toward dredging. I, I disagree with you, Joe, because you say the dredging hasn't happened. We, we have a, a new channel almost to the gas stock. But you can't get out of the slip to go to it. Improvement right there in itself. You can't get out of the slip to go to the channel. It's you the can same still go to the day. go out an hour earlier, and you go over to the gas dock, and you can go whenever you want. But that, I mean, the, the point is that it, there has been improvement in terms of water access, and that is something that that's better than what we had. And I, and I just my I mean I I just I think if you have thirty thousand dollars, like Will saying, fix up whatever he can finish for his docs this year, that is showing something too in next year. You say, hey, we need this money. We got to get this money. And this is the project we're going to do. And I like, your, I like the idea of having something in place where you say, okay, we get X, Y, and Z. This is why we did this increase this year. And then next year's 5% is going to be for X, Y, and Z. And I mean, that's a great idea. I'd love to you know, put that in front of the select board. I think they would appreciate that. But um, I just think you gotta get the ball rolling. That's that's just. My I hear what thought. you're saying. I hear what I don't you're want... saying. I hear what you're saying. But you know, you have more time to get in and out of the channel. You don't in your slip coming this summer. It's the same. I, I mean, I'm there. I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm I'm going to be paying this too, just like everybody else. But I just I feel that the little chunks over starting now versus waiting. I think we're going to be taking a bigger chunk. Next year, we're going to look at this going, okay, now we need 10% because we got to do that. And then people are going to pay 160 bucks as opposed to 80, 80, 80. You know, are you just... proposing 5% this year only, or are you proposing a five-year plan? Well, I, I, that's what I, I think that we do need to do a, at least a four-year plan with 5%, which is a 20% increase. That's a lot. Um, that would be not a five-year at least at this stage. I mean, you know, but that's, that's my, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big increase. That's a 20% increase over, that's a pretty sizable increase. I mean, 15% to 20% over five years would be, would be pretty radical for the situation we've been in. So with, with what Flip's saying, that would, that would appreciate for four years, um, that would accomplish all the dredging and then we would be up where we should be, maybe more at that point after multiple 5% increases. Um, then as soon as the dredging's finished, then we're not behind the eight ball with the money trying to come up with a big number. 
If we remember when we went to the select board to raise the winter package fees, one thing they specifically asked for was smaller incremental fees uh, as to not be as harsh to the users. Um, and another thing with you know, realizing that it is a pandemic, but this harbor was busier this year than it ever has been uh, in, in the past 10 years. Um, we saw a, an extreme uptick in users. Uh, we have more people to the waiting list, we have more people calling, looking for the list, more people launching, more people buying fuel. Um, so we've certainly already seen the uptick. Now, with the money and the plan that we can show people, already in the proposed budget that we have not finalized um, with the town, so we've gone to the, the finished meeting, we have already proposed um, almost you know, 50% more in materials maintenance and service contracts. So that starts July 1st, where that'll be next year, because of course, if we do it now, that's money for the next following year. Whereas if we don't do it, then we don't have the money for those that years going forward. Also, if we're looking at things like new piling, like a lobbyist, um, things that came up last night, like the lobbyist, we needed $24,000 or $25,000. Um, and the question was, where do we pay? For? Well, the marina didn't have to in the budget. Here's a $30,000 increase, $30,000 worth of more materials, worth of more services, worth of more anything for this marina with a slight 5% increase this year. That's the only way to pay for these things. That's the only way to get this marina going. We can't wait until dredging is done and then say, all right, let's start fixing this place because then we already have it. Last night when the select board approved the contract and the discussion came up how to pay the $25,000, they looked at four or five different accounts, only one of which was Marina Enterprise, but that was taken off the table. The money's not coming from there. The money is coming, the money is coming from where it came last time when the lobbyist was paid four years ago to get the money for the channel. What about 5% over three years? That accomplishes a couple of things. It gets the ball rolling right now on, on generating some additional income, but it doesn't lock us in longer than three years. And at that time, you know, before, well before then, we can do an assessment and look at another plan for three or five years. When we know total budget figures and where we stand debt expenditures, upcoming projects, and so forth. I say 5% a year for three years? Yes. Yeah, I think we got to get something going, unfortunately. And uh, as long as we have, you know, when we send out the bills, say, this is like a deposit on the work we're going to be doing. Exactly. You know, you got to explain to people that where the money's going, I think. Right. And, uh, you know, put out a little you know, a little fluff kind of something saying, hey, you know, this money is going to be used for projects to improve the thing. And, and we know that, you know, the back back slips are not dredged yet, but that's on the table for next fall. But we, we want to get things ready to go. And we don't, you know, we need the money to get things going. And if we, like Joe says, don't lock it in for too long, and then we can change things in a couple more years. It also, it also wouldn't hurt to point out, uh, maybe even on these bills, that uh, you know, as of this coming season, people will no longer be treated to the spectacle of boats being stranded in what's supposed to be the channel every day. That's right. I mean, there is an improvement, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, and, and the, especially our visitors, the ones who trailer their boats in and stuff, they're gonna notice that. It's funny not seeing mud there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea, Joe. I would, uh, I would, I would, I would go along with that. I think that's appropriate. Yeah, that makes sense. A fifteen, uh, you know, fifteen percent over three years. That's that's Plus the selectmen still have to approve. Approve also. Of course, yeah. What, Walter? I said the selectmen are the final have the final say on the whole deal. We're proposing this to the selectmen. Right. You know, correct me if I'm wrong on this with the fees. I, I know that we can't uh, increase the uh, trailer launching fee because of the uh, either the state and federal government involvement in it. However, uh, people that have their trailers and their trucks in there, 
they come up and they park, you know, especially on a busy weekend in the parking lot and take up quite a bit of the parking places there. Is there any way that we can charge a launching fee and then charge an additional fee if they're, if they're parking a trailer there for the day or two days? That was run by the state when they came up with the 450,000 to put in the new launching ramp, okay? And the stipulation was one, that the fees stay at $10 and two. Yeah, but to uh, launch the boat, but what about storing the- Well, I'm, I'm getting into that. And yeah. the second stipulation was that there be those 60 places for trailer parking. Okay. Now, maybe they've had a change of mind on that. You know, that was, that was uh, about seven, eight years ago. Well, is that, is that money, the $10 inclusive for if someone drops their boat off and then parks their trailer with their vehicle as well? So that's 10 bucks for the day for that? 10 bucks for the day to launch and park your vehicle. Yeah, uh, that's they're, taking, they're taking up two or three spaces, sometimes a lot more than that. Can, can the state revisit that? I don't know. I don't know, it's worth asking them. It's worth yeah. asking. I know Churro, what Churro did was impose a waterways fee on yeah. top of that, um, which made it quite a bit complicated though. Um, so I, I think it'd be better to maybe, you know, question the state on that first and see where we can go with them. Now, does that fee cover parking for the day? Does it cover overnight parking too, or just uh, the day? Overnight parking is $20, um, which I think is a separate from the 5%. Um, we should look at overnight fee. It's $20 now, um, you know, increasing that 25 to $25 or something like that. Um, making a little more off of an overnight or the same with like a lunch tie up where it's ten dollars now for two hours it's only five bucks an hour if we double that at 20 that's still a pretty darn good rate to come here where they are the ones benefiting from the current dredging as well 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 definitely right. the lunch tie ups because i mean the tie ups of people coming in here and they're going to be more, and more people coming in here we need to we need to revisit that because I think that's one place where, you know, going out in the future, there could be a lot more revenue, uh, you know, with, a, with some more dock spacage and charging a fee for people that are coming in to tie up, that are coming from Sasuit Harbor or coming from Truro or Provincetown to go to Max for an ice cream cone or to go to the bookstore or Pearl. I mean, you know, they should, I mean, I know if we go out to P-Town, you pay pretty dearly to tie up out there at a mooring for a couple hours to go in and eat dinner somewhere. Yeah, the other marinas showed an hourly rate. Several of them did as well. Yeah, I think that would be definitely in line to, to increase that, at least double that fee. Um, where, you know, that is, as you guys all know, from the docks out front, that is one of the hardest, that in the launch ramp, of course, which is hard to change. But the, the lunch tie-ups do uh, take up a lot of staff time and it, it ties up a lot of people. So it is worth more money where it is, you know, you're putting on an extra person, especially on a weekend, that's our plan to get people on those docks to monitor this situation. Um, and that costs money and they should be paying for it. What, what about the idea of going to an hourly rate? Because one of the problems I noticed uh, while I was still operating off my mooring is, you know, when I would come in to pick people up is boats would tie up for lunch and stay there all day. Yeah, so that would have to be um, probably presented to them in, in a manner where that we tell them typically it's $10 for two hours. Um, we could have a check in time kind of thing. If we went to $20 for two hours and then each additional hour there you go. something like that and and most people they let us know i mean a lot of the people let us know hey we're going to the beachcomber we're going to churro we're doing something like that and we just they say you know i'll just pay double because it was only ten dollars they didn't care it was 20 bucks so yeah um, for the beach sticker for the day yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 those definitely need to be readdressed i agree with you 100 percent. and 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 uh those could easily be increased now that you do have that accessibility to those areas pretty much to those docks exactly 
it, it didn't it didn't come up too often, but some people played the game a little bit where oh I can't get out for another. I'm in right. I just made it in with the tide. I can't get out for four hours. So sorry, but again, we we shouldn't really have much of that problem this year. But you have that problem because people in the back have been fighting for those spots to get out. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and, right, we'll and that ends up becoming the issue. We'll be tying up to you, Kev. Yeah, you you anytime, Flip. Walter with that little boat would be. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, that boat will slip right in. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You got everybody in the back, and Dave is correct. You're going to get more bitching if you increase the – I understand it, but they've got shit for the last 10 years. And they've been sitting in mud. And all along, the day, you've been using boats down there. You know, they're not putting boats in. But, uh, but like, I understand well, about the fee increase, and, and, and I can see it, and I agree with it. But I, I see Dave's point, and I mean, he's sitting in the mud. He's going to have to go out at 5 o'clock and stay on the side just to handle his business. We know that the mooring permit holders are not going to see any improvement this summer nor next summer, the, at least the third year before they're going to see any improvement. Um, do we want to go up on their fees? Well, we could delay them and, and not delay do the boring, yeah. two years and then go from a 15% in two years or something. Start and there. That, that's pretty pathetic out there. Well, I know, but but, but, but yeah, I agree with you. you. Yeah, maybe you don't hit the mooring guys and you say, you know, you guys aren't going to, I don't know. I mean, I yeah. just structure this, but eventually it's all got to happen. It Once does. It, I agree. It has to happen, but I, I'm just not sure this is the time. A five percent increase on the um, on the mooring would be ten dollars. Yeah. Now, just as a comment on Kevin's uh, idea, is that like Will said, this is the, last year was the busiest year we've had in I don't know how many years. So I, I you know, people may bitch and moan, but they're still going to pay and they're still going to go out there. Um, you know, I don't like it either, but I think it's what we have to do. Dave, yeah. how many arguments did you have in the gas stock this year? <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, but you guys yeah, are making it, money off of this. It, it, We're not making double. Money. You're going to double that with the, with people coming into the harbor. Will, am yeah. I your best customer? Oh yeah, filling up all the time. <laughs> Dave, that's why Dave doesn't need to worry about going out back. He doesn't go out back until he's done for the day. Right. That's true. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. filled up four times. You can't, afford, you can't afford that 80 bucks there, Dave. <laughs> Dave tips. But, no. but I'm just, all I want to point out is you just opened up that channel. You opened up that whole area. The boat, you're going to have more people down here than some. You're going to double oh. that. Oh, I know all that. The I know. People, all the mooring people are going to be fighting for that channel space as well as all you in the back. I agree. And I, I don't, I, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to get it. Yep. It's, it's going to be a cluster down. Uh, yeah, we know that's going to happen anyway. I don't care if you're paying more money or not paying more money. It's still going to happen. How am I going to get to the fuel dock for my three gallons of diesel every six months? <laughs> you got a bucket? <laughs> we, if, we, if we look at the plan of 5% over three years, it gives us a couple of options. One, we're only going three. And at that time, we can in increase it even more if the need presents itself. Um, the other thought is um, it gives us time to look at the finances, to get a grip on them and do some projection with the debt and what's coming up and, and reassess it. Three years go by pretty quickly because you know I don't like being locked in at 5% for five years, when there's a possibility the need may be for six or 7% down the road. Yeah, That's my thought. I that, I, Joe, I think that proposal satisfies, um, um, it, it kind of flips initial comment about let's get it going, right? And, you know, rather than lock in long term, like you said, we evaluate further, look at our capital plan, 
look at our current debt, what we can afford in, in additional debt, all those kind of things. And then we come up, you know, we're locked in for call it 21, 22 and 23, but then we can always reevaluate that. And, um, you know, and also if we'll, if we increase um, more, more transient fees in addition to the dockage, is that more than 30 then we're talking? Or was that kind uh, of all in? I, I mean, it, it's, generally in that area but you know that could be 40. yeah and then what and then also what about um will the will the new gas tank be in place the fuel tank be in place for this season that is the hope yeah, yeah. so i mean we would be looking at additional funds from that because we have more capacity there exactly so well also hopefully more competitive pricing too yeah yeah exactly but and, and so then if we kind of look, it, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's ordinary operating costs that Will has kind of year to year operating costs, maintenance and supplies and all that. But if you look at 30,000 or $40,000 on, on debt, you know, you can raise a lot of debt on $40,000 with the interest rate environment today. It's probably, you know, hundreds, more than a couple hundred thousand dollars. So you could do, I don't know what your capital program is, Will, or, but you know, that's a lot of improvements. So, you know. Yeah, yeah and, we, and we need them, so. Yeah. I mean, you could call this the first step, you know. Say, yeah. this is, this is, uh, this is our interim plan till we can get a little more an analysis going, you know. Yeah. I would, um, I would advocate that if we were gonna do that, it was approved that in the leases that go out with the notice of the increase, um, that there be specific mention made, well, this year there's going to be dock improvements and we're looking at additional improvements in the future. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely it, tell them what they're getting for their money. Yeah, exactly. And it's been 10 years, yeah. Yeah, we need it's been 10 years since our last increase and, and you know what's coming. You know? We, we yeah. definitely need to revisit the cover letter anyway, um, just because of the dredging the operations, uh, let people know. So that needs to be revisited anyway and rewritten, which will go along with the new, new fees going out, hopefully. But after the leases do go out, um, I would like to put on the agenda a little bit down the road um, that we are able to look at the entire financial picture of the enterprise fund in all the various categories of debt, the expenditures, the projections, uh, and so forth. That way we have, uh, we're in a good position moving forward from this spring, knowing what we're looking at. Yeah. If it's okay, Joe, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a finance guy by background. I can, um, it, or, or Will can do it on my behalf. If we can get information from the, from the town accountant on that, I can, you know, look at it and we can, we can talk about it at a future meeting kind of look at what the enterprise fund looks like today. And as you said, make a, based on these increases that we're proposing, assuming they get, they get approved, you know, what it would look like in three years or so, you know, it's a projection, but at least it gives us, it gives us a, a framework around what, um, you know, what the Marina would look like in, in three years in terms of improvements and, and things like that. So. I'd like to take you up on that. And um, the committee, I'm sure, will agree and vote to present you with a golden key to the men's room down at the Marine. <laughs> <laughs> and a bill for 10 bucks that. for the key. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, just, just to elaborate on that, that, that would be great, Sam. To elaborate on that, I, I think it has to start with the info coming from Will on the Enterprise Fund and all the expenditures and everything then incorporate the accountant as you see a need to. But if, Will, if you could, this is down the road, send us all that info and then Sam could go to work on it and do a presentation so we have everything in front of us. Yeah, I didn't know who, I didn't know, Will, do you do that or does that handle through the town, all that all that accounting? Do you just- that, um, What we do is, is we present the budget um, to the town administrator and the finance committee, sit with them, uh, they go over their aspect, we go over ours, and then down the road, we come up with a finalized plan together, and then uh, that moves on to uh, town meeting. Right, and, but in addition to that, Will, I'm talking about the present 
makeup of the enterprise fund right now, you know, the debt and all of that. So we're looking at right now moving forward. Yes, and like I was trying to say, uh, Sam, if, if you would like to come in here and look over all those proposed budgets with me, I'd be more than willing to have you come on in and sit with me and look them over. I'm not at uh, an account. Yeah, sure. No, I, yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, what, um, yeah, I don't want to belabor this point too much. We can take it offline, but what, what Joe's referring to, yeah, so that's kind of what the operations are year to year, and that's fine. That's actually printed in the public documents, the town warrant, so you, yep, that's pretty accessible. But what we don't know is, is um, how much cash the enterprise fund has, what the debt is, how much what's called retained earnings. In other words, how much kind of excess earnings do we have over the years? That's all monies that are kind of, um, you know, that's important information for our, for our analysis. So um, yeah, that's why I was thinking that's, that's the now I'm referring to Sam right yeah, now. If, it, if Will doesn't have that, I would go, because the town in their bookkeeping accounting has to keep track of all that. They have yeah. to by law. So somebody's got it, um, I'm assuming the town accountant. So yeah, and that's the spreadsheet that I'm talking about that you can come on in and uh, work okay. on. Okay, yeah, I'll be I'll 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 be in touch with you then and we'll we'll make that happen. No problem. Going uh, well, going back to the moorings for just a second, the transient moorings uh, are in the dredged already dredged area, aren't they? Correct. Yeah, okay. I certainly wouldn't feel bad about ra raising the fees on those. No, not at all. Do you want to look at a three year 5% plan on the slips and transient moorings only? Yeah, yeah I, I think know. so. As a, start, as a first step, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see why we don't include all the moorings. I mean, yeah, because uh, all I the agree. moorings aren't dredged. Well, neither are yeah, the but we're not back either. So neither, neither are the slips. Um, well, the slips are going to be in a year. The mornings well, yeah. may be another two years. Kind of the, the, You're breaking up, Flip. Yeah, but hold on. But guys, think about this. They're using the docks. They're actually benefiting as much as people that are in the back that aren't dredged this first year. Granted, they're going to have to wait another year before their moorings are dredged. So, but we're looking at a ten dollar increase for them this year, and then ten dollars the following year. I think it's simpler to leave that in the whole thing, the equation, and make it easier to present to the board of selectmen. That's just my thought. So you're saying include the moorings as well, Flip? Did I lose everybody. Flip. As a mooring holder, I I, I personally I don't. So. Know I'm just trying to keep it simple. I don't, if we start segregating, it might get more complicated. And the only problem is though, what about people that have moorings that are in Blackfish Creek or something? I mean, what, are we increasing there? Those are waterway moorings. Are we doing that too? Um, I don't know. Are we? I think so, because they all are going to eventually come to the pier, dock up, and use it. Well, they get a permit, don't they? Yep. So the, the right, water, they got to do the. For example, Blackfish Creek is currently $72. 5% uh, increase would make that $75.60. I, I don't think we should go to change here. And I'd like to see all the numbers a little more rounded. Um, but yep. you know, that would be 75 bucks. So, you know, it's a start. Yeah. And for the non-tax payers, it would be- And they can launch their boat. Yeah, we should probably keep it equal I think it's just simpler. Keep it equal all over the board and try not to exempt this and that and the other thing. Yeah, that's, that's where I come right. out. And the only things I would refrain from the 5% are those uh, daily type fees, lunch tie up, um, uh, the waiting lists. The waiting lists would be better at 20 than 11. Um, and the overnight parking, you know, those more daily fees. And then obviously looking in, like Dave said, to the launch ramp. Um, Again, the, the smaller the fee, it seems to be the more work it is for staff and the more staff time it takes. So where we need more staff, we need more people on the docks, we need more people visible. Um, you know, th those are the, the real users, you know, um, when you guys go down to your boats out back, 
take them out and around, you're not uh, using staff at the same rate as those daily fees. Um, so, you know, well, they have a little heavier bang. So can I suggest that maybe you highlight those four or five things that your, your concerns are and, and tell you, tell us what you think they should be and sure. Or sure. I think, um, yeah. So the, the overnight parking, I think if we started that at 25 instead of 20, the um, wait list move up to 20 instead of 11. Lunch tie up, we move to $20 for two hours and then $10 an additional hour. And then looking into the lawn tramp, see if we can do anything with that. That sounds reasonable to me. What, what was the first item before the waiting list? Uh, the the uh, lunch tie up? Oh, uh, the parking, overnight oh, parking. parking. Yeah. So that uh, 25 instead of 20. And the, the one thing to be aware of with that, I know it says overnight event parking. I believe it was put in there um, for that because of Oyster Fest. So with that, we could charge the 20 for Oyster Fest. So I think it should be um, event parking uh, still at the 20 and the overnight at 25. Um, if we even have an Oyster Fest this year, who knows? But just to keep it uh, separate, because I believe that was the reason why it was separated per, per event parking. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, okay. I thought that was for like, I thought we were getting people at the holding in when they were having weddings and stuff. I wasn't sure what that was. So we're going to propose 5% for three years plus those other uh, random increases on the, on the daily fees. Correct. Okay. Are we ready for a motion yet? Yeah, what I about the that. off season? What about all the off season and winter storage stuff? We leaving that alone because we just, we just did all that. that. We just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's working out really well here. Um, the the people seem to be pretty happy, um, or you know, as happy as they can be paying. Um, but they, it seems to be working out pretty fairly for them, and they seem to respect that quite a bit. Um, so I think it's working well. Yeah, we just went through that about a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah I know. I just wanted to see. Just make sure. Cool. All right. Are we ready for a motion? Yeah. I'll make so. a motion. John? I would, before you do the motion, I would do that 5% um, rounded to at right. least the nearest whole dollar or the, the five or the zero uh, okay. dollar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with that. I move, I move no the pennies. least. Yeah, no pennies. Yeah, no pennies. <laughs> I move that we uh, raise the uh, overall slip and warring fees 5% a year for three years, round it up to the nearest dollar, and increase the overnight parking fee from 20 to Hold 20. on, John. Hold on. I'm writing this down. I got to oh, okay. take a minute. <laughs> raise the fees, mooring and slip fees, 5% a year for three years, round it off. Go ahead. To the nearest dollar, up rounded up to the nearest dollar. Nearest dollar, okay. Raise overnight parking fees. I just ask it. Sorry, you, Joe. You just said mooring and slip fees. Yes. We had yes. talked about moorings. Are we good with raising moorings too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. All right. Okay. Uh, raise the overnight parking fee from twenty to twenty-five dollars a night. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Raise the wait list fee from $11 a, night, uh, a year to $20 a year. Okay. Launch tie up. The, the lunch tie up uh, from, 20, uh, from uh, $10 an hour to $20 for two hours plus $10 for each additional hour. $20 for two hours and $10 for each additional hour. 
that it? And last of all, uh, yeah, that is it. That is it. Okay. Uh, the motion reads to raise the fees 5% a year over the next three years, rounded off to the nearest dollar. Overnight parking fee raised from 20 to 25, the wait list fee from 11 to 20, and the launch tie up $20. Tie -up. What's that? Lunch tie up. I said launch tie up. Lunch. <laughs> You're always thinking of food, Walter. <laughs> launch, no free lunch, Walter, you know? No, no free lunch. <laughs> launch tie up $20 for two hours and $10 each additional hour. So uh, yep. uh, just a note, should you put a date, uh, the date on there? Effective date. Yeah. And would be um, February 1st. 2021 season. Yeah. 2021 season. season, exactly. Whatever, because we have to get it approved, then we have to um, create the communication in the billing. So I don't know when it would. So May is that um, Why would it be the 2021 season? That's what I was just asking. Well, that's the this year, 2021. No, no. I, oh, oh, I thought you meant 20 and 21. Okay. Yes, yeah. for the 20, 2021 season. season. Right. 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 Got mm -hmm. it. And Can so make one, little, more. one little correction. Uh, rounded up to the nearest dollar, not off to the nearest dollar. Somebody will pick that out. <laughs> right. Rounded up to the nearest dollar. And is it, Joe, is it clear from that that we're proposing 5% per year for three years? I just want to make sure the language is clear. The motion that was dictated reads, raise the arena fees 5% over three years for the next three years, slips and moorings, round it up to the nearest dollar. Right. Additionally, I would, sorry, I would suggest we put that's a little ambiguous to me. I would put per year in there. That's my opinion. Per year for three years? Yeah. Well, it, isn't that what we're suggesting? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Per year for three right. years. Okay. Raise the marina slip and mooring fees 5% per year for three years. Round it up to the nearest dollar. Right. The overnight parking fee from 20 to 25, the wait list fee from 11 to 20, the launch tie up fee, two hours, uh, $20 for two hours and $10 each additional hour. Is everybody fine with that? Anybody have any issue? Okay. Do we have a motion? Yeah. John made the motion, right? Yeah. John we need a second. Has, has read. And who is the second? Was it Sam? Yeah, I'll second it. Yes. Uh, I'll second okay. Any further discussion? Second is an alternate. <laughs> All this. right. All in favor as the motion was read. Say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay. I'm opposed. Who Dave. opposed? I did. Dave. Dave. Okay. Now, I'm just I'm just looking over this motion one more time. So we're looking at 15% over three years, as, as I read this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a motion, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a request. It has to go through all the channels. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, actually it's, more than 15% because you get 5%, then 5% yeah. on that and 5%. So with whatever that math works out, can't do it in my head. It's compound. It's yeah, exactly. Right. Because you're going five a year. So 
It's probably going to be like stays 16, there. 17 percent, whatever. <clears throat> All right. Five, five, um, five. Or it's easy, easy math. You can look at the books before when we did it before and what it did. It went from, if I remember correctly, it was like it was. A, yeah, it's, it works out to, you're right. I think it works out to like uh, 28% or something weird like that. It's something weird instead of 15% it, it, because of you're doing the 5% on the each. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, kind of, of, it, it actually comes out to over 20%. Sam, uh, are you looking at a calculator? I, I can't remember. It might be eight. Not on a three. I think flip that might be on a five-year basis, but not on oh, a three, right? right? Hold on, let me... Um, 20, I think it's 22%. I can't remember. I, it's, it adds up to a decent amount of money. Fifteen. I got 16%, but I don't know if I did it right. So, but the, take, my, what if you take, um, my, my slip is about $1,900. If you take that at 5%, over three years. That's 95 bucks. But then you got it, then you add that. So then you, the next year, it's that's 90, 1995. It's, it's 100 the second year, Flip. Yep. That's 100 the second year. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it went from 1990 to. That's like 2000 to 2100. That's 105 to 30 years. So you would go up to 2205 roughly from, from the from 1900. Let's write this. So 1900 and would end that's up. That's not trivial. End up at 2205. Sam, is that what you're getting on the calculator? I didn't do that, but that um, three hundred dollar increase total. Yeah. Well, when are you um, asking uh, slip owners to get their boats out of the water this year? That's the next issue that we uh, that I'd like to discuss is when to um, when to pull the trigger on that. If dredging is going to start October first. Um, it would have to be a couple of weeks before that. So most likely um, around That's after Labor Day. That's, that's a, a factor I hadn't considered. So, so, well, I, you know, that just, uh, you know, you're not only increasing, but you're right. truncating the season. I, I don't know. I, got, I, I don't. Well, one of, I know. know. We are, I just we are. think it's the wrong time. One of the, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I just think this is the wrong time. I think we yeah. need to wait a year. That's why. Um, you know, one of the things that occurred to me was the increased interest in in fall boating in September and in October. And I think that's a factor. Um, we're offering next summer the same conditions in, in the slip and mooring area, not the channel. And we're also asking them for an early removal. Um, all right. Is there any dis any further discussion? Yeah, I, I, I understand the objection to that. The same objection could be raised the following year for people that have moorings because their, their, their uh, season is going to be truncated when they have to come into the mooring field in September, in October 1st. All those moorings are going to have to come out early. So do we wait until we're all done with the dredging to start increasing the fees? I, 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 I understand the objection, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not unsympathetic to it. I'm just asking. I, I wouldn't go along with that to answer your question. No, we don't wait until dredging is completely done, but a major part of it will be done in the fall. We're talking what uh, over a hundred slips. Yeah, but well, there's an awful lot of moorings too. Yeah, well, the following fall, ho hopefully, you know, the mooring area would be done. But at yeah. least next summer, we have the channel, we have the fuel launch, we have all of area one done all around the pier to the other side. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned um, 
Flip, you said that was about a three hundred dollar increase over the three years. Yeah. Correct. Um, so I, at I, that point, everything will be dredged for I'm you. Concerned. Yeah. That, no, that's that's true. I'm concerned also about um, taking the boats out by mid September. <coughs> I agree. I, I preempted the whole part of this by saying I know it sucks that we're going to be pulling everybody out. 15 days earlier than what their lease is in the back, October 15th, which is what the lease says. I mean, granted, we've all gotten away with more than that, but um, yeah, I know. I don't, I, I know that's, 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 that was my biggest dilemma with trying to increase this year, but we got to start now and not whack everybody with that $300 in three years or two years and say, okay, you got to come up now. Boom. That's a big increase. Yeah. Can we give that's, um, that's, my, that's my feeling on it. I don't I mean, I see Dave's point, you know, I don't want to pay if it's not there. I get that, but you got to pay to get it. I'd so, go along with a, I'd go along with a, like a, maybe a 2% on the first year, but a 5% for three years, just for that first year, it's just, it's, it's sitting in my craw the wrong way. I, I 80 bucks. They're, it's they're, not 80 bucks. It's the principle of it, too, by the way. You know, okay. I mean, there's a lot to it. That. Is it the principle? Because you don't have what you... I understand it. That's what I'm getting at. And I get it. You're getting ripped off the 15 days and, you're, and you don't have the new stuff. I get it. But you, gotta, you have to start somewhere. You got you to gotta give to get. Well, maybe, maybe what you just said, though, there is a, is a decent compromise. I, I don't know how complicated this is going to be for everybody, but maybe if we did like a one or 2% increase the first year. And then the second two years, we did the 5% increase. I think you know, that's, I, I it would go along with that. Us, it would still give us some money to work with in terms of some improvements. And it would still give us, you know, like the impetus to, to go forward with the fee increases. It, the, the, it just sounds more reasonable, Martha. If it you, if you, um, you know, it I, might I get easier sell with, you know, people at town meeting that have slips and are going to be asking the same question. Yeah, I, I hear I hear what Flip is saying loud and clear. You've got to start sometime. I agree wholeheartedly with that. OK, um, I have no reservation at all about starting next summer. If we did that. You know, we may even want to start at six or seven percent, given what the total financial picture appears to be. The other factor is the COVID. Next summer, hopefully, you know, a year from now, we're out of this mess. I, it, it's it's not you know it's not the amount of money in the increase. I, I think it's the symbol of it that the town. Oh, okay. is looking to add a fee. Pardon? The town so, is So you guys are going more Flip, you're breaking up. Out that you passed motions. We're, we're having a discussion when it was passed. Yeah, the motion's been passed. The motion been passed. Right. The discussion was over, it was seconded, it was voted on, and we had one dissent. I, I, didn't, I didn't vote on the motion. I called it for everybody to vote, but I didn't vote. And then, and then there was a comment made, okay? What I'd like okay. to do is go down officially, like they do in the select board, go down the list of people and, and get the final vote, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm simply offering my final thought on it. You know, it's kind of evolving because everybody has offered some very good thoughts. So why don't we, we near the end by saying, is there any further discussion? What about Joe or in um, committee if we want more with a step increase rather than a flat increase of 5% to try and kind of, un, uh, you know, so that, you know, we understand that people are getting compromised slightly by a half a month this year. So we're only going up something less than five and then we start to increase it. So we get to the same place after three years. Yeah, that's fine. That's, I'll go along with that. So that way we don't have to kind of justify the shorter year, uh, sh shorter season because of the dredging and all that. We, 
but we end up getting to our financial plan that we kind of talked about of 15% over three years. And then, you know, at that point we have to reevaluate anyway. So Dave, can I ask you, how would you feel about 3% the first year? I, how would I, you feel about- I, I like the step increases that Sam just suggested. Yeah. I think that makes more sense. I think that's a, a reasonable thing for even in, you know, town government, when they have pay raises, a lot of times new people that come in, they don't come in at the top salary. They come in at a step raise. So they have to put, yeah. you know, they have to put in such amount of years before they reach the max. It saves the town money when they do that, but it also accomplishes the goal. In this case, it's kind of reversing that. And we're yeah. looking at um, realizing what we want to accomplish, but doing it in a way that doesn't look like, you know, we're just hitting it right out of the gate. And, right. uh, yeah. and we can put that in the communication that we appreciate the inconvenience and of uh, the dredging. It's, it's a long-term benefit for the, for the, you know, for the, for the Marina, for the whole community. But, you know, so we're going to go like this, whatever it is, three to maybe it's got to be six the next year and seven the following year or something like that, you know. So is, is that what your thought is, three, six, and seven? Well, I mean, we want to get simply- That would be 16% after three years. I, I just made those- five, points. seven. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, even if it ends up at 16%, it would probably be less increase than doing the five, five, five. Yeah, it, it's about, it's, yeah, exactly, because the compounding. So, I mean, we're kind of splitting hairs here, but yeah, so I, I either way, what would you say, Walter? Three, five, and um, three, five, seven. seven. Yeah. So we so we kind of jump two percent every year. So it's linear. Any discussion on that? You know, this is such a sensitive area. Um, I think that are a lot of people are going to have opinions on who pass it. So I just want to be careful that everybody is heard. And, and it's a thorough discussion before we finalize it. That's uh, my goal. Is I there have to make wait, an amendment I, to that motion? I just wanna say from my standpoint um, of doing it the way that I proposed was to make it simple for accounting purposes. I totally agree with the way you guys wanna do it. I think that's a smarter way to do it, but I, did, I think that as long as it's you know two for, and it's very specific to get to where we want to get, just I that just, fifth. I just crunched some numbers. Uh, I used the the fee that I paid uh, last year for my uh, transient slip for my my charter, sixteen hundred and seventy four dollars, uh, and I, I ran it three five and seven percent successively, and I came out with almost the same end figure that I did at 5% per year. Right, exactly. 1900 and yeah. change. So I think that I, th I think that's a smart compromise. Yeah, go for what it. Do you think? Dave, how do Perfect. you feel about that? I, I feel that that makes more sense. Yeah, I, 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 I can, I'll drink to that. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> Where's a, my coffee? Yeah, I think it's a great compromise. All right. So yeah. The original right. proposer has to make that change to the motion. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. Would that be me? Okay. Yep. Uh, I propose we amend the motion, uh, the first part of the motion, to read that we increase the mooring and slip fees on a progressive scale over three years with an increase of 2% per year. But well, starting at three. No, starting at three percent. Yeah, why don't we just say three, five, and seven? I think that's yeah. Okay. Think, yeah. Specify the percentages. Three, three, um, three five, and seven percent per year. Yeah, starting, starting 2021. 2021. Exactly. All right. Is everybody comfortable with that motion? Um, All right. Wait. Vote on the amended. Hold on. Hold on. I got something to say about that, Joe. So, <laughs> risen 5%. No, I'm just trying to do the math, Sam. 
when you have when you do the five percent increase, then that final year you're doing a seven percent increase. Is that gonna was that gonna still is that because now now we've done is that gonna get us over that fifteen percent? The numbers I came out with were almost the same. Yeah, at five percent. Do it. Five, right. Yeah, at five percent per year. Perfect. That's good. Hold on. Let me give you the. Let me give you this. It's it's um, check the math. I, I didn't quite... point, it's it's within a decimal point of the same. It's virtually you know, it's fifteen point eight versus fifteen point seven. All right, I'm good with it. Yeah. So. Perfect. Somebody will have to second the amendment to the Excellent. motion. I think. All right, John, you you offered. I'll second motion to amend it. <clears throat> Who seconded? Yep. Who but... seconded, please? I can, Sam. I'm good. Flip second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Now we'll take a vote on the amended motion. Um, to, do I need to read it for anybody? Okay. Um, okay. So we'll have a motion now. Or the, the, I'm sorry, the vote stands um, as it was amended. Yes. Yeah. Unanimous right. vote, right, okay. All right, see if we can um, move on here. Uh, no, we, this gets presented to the selectmen now. Correct? Hopefully the next meeting, right? February 4th or whatever it is. Uh, Will, will you present this to the selectmen at the next meeting? I, I don't know if I can present for the dredging task force. I mean, for the uh, Marine Advisory or not, but yes, um, I will be presenting it then. I'll bring it up. Um, I don't know if you guys have to present your opinion or if I can do that, or you can send a letter. I'm not sure how that works, but um, in the legal aspect of the meeting. The way, the way it was done the last time for the fee increase, um, presented by the Harbor Master's Office um, with a statement that um, it was approved and recommended by the Marine Advisory Committee. Do you, do you attend the meeting on? Yeah, I, I, I'm there anyway, yeah. Okay. Okay. I would, I would suggest that before we present that our, our kind of key points from our communication to the um, to the slip holder, um, you know, uh, Marina community, we kind of have those points because you can, you know, that would be key. I think those are going to answer a lot of the questions that any selectman would have on that, uh, or maybe not every question, but it would certainly give a good rationale for why we're doing it. We talked about, you know, kind of planning for the future. Um, the dredging's already in place. The plan to dredge is already in place. We have, you know, a capital improvements plan and things like that. So all all those kind of um, those points. And then we haven't had an increase. I think Will said ten years. So um. okay. Um, we move on to the um, next item, which was the um, charge which I sent out to everybody. Um, let me provide a little bit of context in, as to how this issue came up. In the um, 2009 Department of Revenue Marina Enterprise Evaluation Report, they made a recommendation that the committee look at revising the charge. Um, the year later, it was looked at, it was revised presented to the select board, which they approved it, put it on the warrant for the town meeting, it was approved there, okay? Um, the reason I put it on was as an informational one. So you were aware of it because they were gonna change it on the town website. It was not for the purpose of re-examining it to see if anybody wants to change it. However, it's on the agenda. If there's something you want to change in it, have at it. We'll discuss it. 
Anybody have any, any comments, any thoughts? None? Okay. Um, wait, wait a minute. Um, I think it does a pretty good job of explaining what we do. Well, there was a good deal of work put into it to make it as comprehensive as possible to cover everything. And I, I think it accomplished that. The old one was about the electrical system. It was very outdated. Yeah, yeah that's the one I was looking at. I, I, I was oh, yeah. thinking in terms of what we've just done with the dredging. And I looked at that and I thought, that's doesn't yeah, even mention. 2014. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Sorry. Okay, so nobody's interested in changing it. We'll leave it as it is. All right. We're closing in on nine o'clock. Why don't we go to um, the end and um, see if there's any suggestion for new business and future concerns. I think we've already brought up one and that is um, in, in, in you know, another month or two to um, everybody have access to the complete financial picture, which um, Sam has um, offered to oversee. So um, Sam will, Sam and Will will get this out to us. So we're all looking at the same thing. And um, um, then we can discuss it. So that's one thought. Does anybody have any others? None? Okay. I'm looking at the calendar. Four weeks would be February 24th. Looks good to me. Yeah. Yeah, fine with me. Is there anybody who can't do that date? We'll go to Acapulco. <laughs> oh, I will be here, I guess. <laughs> I wish. Okay. It's time to be in Acapulco. Yeah. We Never will. We will set that as the um, next date. That is the 24th of February. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. <laughs> and Martha, a good night's work. Thank you all. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Take okay. care. All right, we'll see you. Nice to meet you, Kevin. See you down the pier. No. No. See y'all in Acapulco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>